politely ask everyone to please turn your cell phone off or put it on uh, vibrate. Thank you. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Stinnett? Here. Pagano? Here. Schmidt? Here. Fernandez? Here. Lee? Here. Gribb? Here. Egan's excused. Buddha? Here. Shildroff? Here. Seeing we have a quorum, I call this meeting to order. Mr. Egan is excused from our meeting tonight. He's doing some law enforcement training in the city of Chicago. Next on the agenda, we have approval of minutes from our meeting on executive minutes of March 10th. Mr. Caputa moves for approval, second by Ms. Pagano. All those in favor? Aye. As a result of some communication received from the administration on Friday, eliminating the need for a supplemental appropriation to buy out the golf cart lease, I would like to move to amend the agenda to remove bill number 8985 from this agenda. Be second by Mr. Schmidt. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I would also like to amend the agenda to add correspondence from Kevin O'Donnell dated March 18th to the agenda. Second by Mr. Gribb. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next thing on the agenda, we have hearing from citizens. First one on the list is Denise Outlaw. Come on up to the podium, ma'am. Right here. Please state your name and address for the record. Hello, my name is Denise Outlaw Adams. I'm a real estate broker with To Buy or Sell Realtors right here in Old Town, Florissant. Welcome. Okay. The floor. I was at the uh, Taste of Florissant this weekend and I was invited by our mayor to come speak about the State of Union and what's going on in North County. I wanted to let everyone know that I uh, basically just bought a building across the street I've been in real estate for 17 years. I moved my business from St. Charles, I'm sorry, from Chesterfield to Florissant. Reason being that the economy is coming back tremendously well. The growth is awesome here. For everyone who's not aware, we are uh, offering a program in the city of Florissant for homeowners for $6,000 for anybody relocating to the area as a first time home buyer in Florissant. It's been a program that's been very, very successful. Our office is booming. We're getting in multiple offer situations, which we haven't seen since the early 2000s. And um, we are getting some very, very good press. One of the things I wanted to bring up is going to be an article that's coming out in the April St. Louis Magazine. And it's basically talking about the state of North County and our business is coming back. We've got a 20% increase over 2012. We've had over 200 and, I'm sorry, 115 North County homes that sold in 2013, over $200,000. We are seeing a big influx of relocation. I'm very happy to say that I have a family relocating here from Denver. They chose to come to North County to come to the Florissant area, and I'm very happy to represent them. Uh, I've personally been in business for 17 years in real estate, formerly with Remax for 10 years, Caldwell Banker for seven. I chose to move to Florissant. I chose to bring my business over here because the growth is absolutely incredible. It's outstanding. With the programs that we offer here from the city, uh, I don't know if many of you all are aware that this $6,000 uh, is basically luring people to Florissant it's working, it's good, we're sharing the news. I have information for a link to the St. Louis Magazine that this article is gonna be in, and I am personally very, very happy to be across the street and to be a part of the uh, Florissant community. As I stated, I moved my family and my business here to make a difference in real estate. And my name is Denise with To Buy or Sell. Thank you, Ms. Outlaw. Thanks for choosing Florissant. Next, 
Next on the list is Mr. Jerry Zeller. My name is Jerry Zeller. I live at 1695 Mark Twain Drive. I was here at the last meeting on March the 10th. And I asked the mayor about the department heads were not allowed to go into the gym on May the 1st to answer questions from the citizens from March 2, 4, 6, and 8. On the card, I checked it off to have a reply back. I'd like to know how long it takes to get a reply back and why it hasn't been answered. The other thing is, why does some of the people running for a council member have different rules? There are signs in Florida and it has that emblem up there on it. I think this is against the rules of the city of Florida and to have that on it. it. To me, it looks as though that the office of the mayor is backing these people when that emblem is on there. I wish somebody could tell me why that there are different rules for the council members that are in office now and the ones that are trying to get in office for the signs that are being put up. Thank you. Next we have Mr. Tim Jones. is uh, Tim Jones, 865 Daniel Boone, back here in Florissant. Well, I thought I'd come up and speak tonight, you guys. Uh, Saturday I had some issues out on the streets of Florissant. Uh, I usually get up pretty early in the morning before I go hit the streets, and uh, every morning at 8 o'clock, right on the nose, my sign steward calls me. My sign steward is somebody I appointed to take care of my signs in the beginning of this election. He called me up that morning and said, Mr. Jones, uh, we took a hard hit last night, and I said, well, go ahead, throw it at me. He said, well, since the beginning of the signs getting put up, there's been 37 of them taken here and there and everywhere. And I said, I understood that. And he said, well, last night we had 26 more taken. And also, Mr. Gribbs' signs uh, took a pretty hard hit, too. Uh, after he mentioned that, I kind of, you know, kind of shrugged it off. I mean, it's part of politics. If anybody's uh, ran in elections, they would know uh, kids kick signs, kids take signs. But one thing my, my steward said uh, to me, he said, Tim, uh, I know it was done by the same person. And I said, how come you say that? And he said, because all the signs were taken out of the bases. So you could tell it was the same person throughout because the bases were all still left. I said, that's fine. Uh, I went about my business, part of politics. I, that was a heavy hit. Uh, I thought about it all day when I was beating on doors, speaking with people. Uh, I've got to know Ward 2 even better than uh, I've lived there for the time that I have. Uh, I know there's three hot spots with teenage kids that hang out, and I thought on the way home from beating on doors, I would stop by there, and I did. On the last house, I found a portion of my signs. I then left there, beat on the door, spoke to the father. The father come out and said he was going to shake his kid down for information. I thought the right thing to do was to go let Mr. Gribb know about his signs also would make a little relief off of him, I think. So I did go over to John's house, and uh, he must have been napping or something like that. I did beat on the door a couple times. So I then proceeded to my house. I called, and I, I left John a, a message letting him know about the signs. Uh, uh, I then decided to call the police department because uh, it's quite a few signs, and they were just not mine. It was also John's signs. And... Uh, uh, Officer Coomer came out and said, Timmy, what do you want to do? I said, uh, well, I don't want to prosecute kids over signs. I mean, I'm sure it was a, a, a fun thing or whatever, but uh, it made some people upset in the neighborhood. If you could please uh, speak to the kids' parents that did this, uh, I would appreciate it. And uh, if Mr. Gribb wanted to take it any further than he could. And uh, that's about all I have to say, you guys. Uh, there's a lot of sign problems, and uh, I have never deliberately took any signs in my whole life, even when I was a kid. I knew it was an important thing for the adults, and uh, it wasn't just the right thing to do. So even when I was a kid, I didn't take signs. But I thought I would share, John, with you about what I found in the neighborhood. Uh, uh, I didn't know if you contacted him or not, but I thought I'd let you know what happened Saturday morning. That's all I have. Thank you, guys. Next on the agenda, we have communications. Email dated March 12, 2014 from Ken Kevin O'Donnell regarding follow-up on previous emails sent to the city. 
Email dated three eight, uh, March 18th, 2014 from Kevin O'Donnell regarding the use of City Crest and Seal. Next on the agenda, we have public hearings. There are none. On the agenda after that is old business, second readings. <coughs> there are none. Next on the agenda, we have new business, board appointments. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to appoint the following individuals to the Emergency Management Commission and uh, commend them for uh, completing their CERT training prior to this appointment. All the members of the Emergency Management Commission has gone through CERT training. Uh, this is a group of individuals that uh, helps the police department uh, um, plan for contingencies in case we have a weather emergency such as a tornado or, or a power outage from an ice storm or, or, or something even worse, maybe an earthquake. Um, I really appreciate the service of these people. The first person is uh, Edward uh, Wademan uh, from 1035 Lees Lane. Second person is Robert Smith, uh, 2823 Chapel View Drive. Uh, first one was Ward 1, second one is Ward 4. And the uh, third one is uh, Michelle uh, Dirge from 26 uh, Valley Drive from Ward 5. I move for approval. Second by Mr. Caputo, all those in favor? Aye, approval's been granted. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have bills for first reading. Bill 8984. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with AgriCredit Acceptance LLC for the lease of the golf cars supplied by M&M Golf Cars LLC. Next on the agenda, we have Bill 8986. Ordinance appropriating the sum of $6,740 from general revenue fund of the city of Florissant to budget account number 4352 theater workshop for the matching funds for the Valley of Flowers children's arts programs. Mr. Stennett moves for a second reading, second by Mr. Gribb. All those in favor? Aye. Ordinance authorizing the sum of $6,740 from the general revenue fund of the city of Florissant to budget account number 4352 theater workshop for matching funds for the Valley of Flowers children's arts programs. Ms. Pagano moves for a third. Please. Stinnett. I should probably excuse myself from this vote being I'm the chairman of the Valley of the Flyers. It'd probably be better if I didn't vote on this. Okay. Schmidt. Oh, sorry, Pagano. <laughs> Schmidt. Hernandez. Lee. Yes. Gribb. Yes. Egan. Caputa. Yes. Children. Yes. Okay. Ordinance appropriating the sum of $6,740 from the General Revenue Fund of the City of Florissant to budget account number 4352, theater workshop for the matching funds for the Valley of Flowers Children's Arts Programs. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak on this? Seeing none, clerk, please poll the council for the final vote. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. I'm sorry, Stennett. Yeah, maybe you are. Schmidt. Hernandez? Lee, yes. Gribb, yes. Egan's not here, Caputa, yes. Shildra. Yes. Bill 8986 becomes ordinance number 8033. Next on the agenda, we have council announcements. Mr. Gribb. <coughs> uh, I have a letter here from uh, Vols Engineering Company, and this pertains to a part of Ward 2 uh, let me read a couple of lines out of here. Uh, for the people uh, that live around Sharon Court and Babbler Drive in particular, it says Vols Incorporated is currently working on the Metropolitan Sewer District in the vicinity of Sharon Court and Babbler Drive. We're doing land surveying control work for a future sewer project. Our survey personnel will be conducting this work during the month of March 2014 enclose a copy of uh, the letters that have been mailed out on a map of the area. So for those people who uh, live near along the creek there around Sharon Court and Babbler Drive, if you see somebody walking around back there with a uh, transit and a pole, they're, they're surveying for some MSD projects. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Grimm. I would like to thank the city engineer, Tim Barrett, and the 57 volunteers who took part in the 
2014 Confluence Trash Bash on March 8th in the city of Florissant. Um, the sites that were worked on in the city were Coke Park, the creek uh, by Bangrock Park, a stretch of Dunn Road, roughly from Florissant Road all the way up to Graham Road, including the highway, and the Egan Center around the jet. Um, I would like to thank the city employees, Ryan Corey, Eric Zire, Greg Kester, Fred Sheljo, Ralph Mersinski, Kevin Podmore, Pat Loftus, the city engineer, Tim Barrett, and his mom, Joyce Barrett, for doing a great job. Also, Mr. Larry Welty, who lives in Florissant, who's the area engineer from MoDOT, and I suggested to Mr. Barrett if uh, certain guys of certain uh, physical builds and ages can't get into a creek, would you mind doing the, the stretch along, along Dunn Road? And we couldn't have worked out better. And we actually went on the highway and did some work there too. So I know Mr. Barrett was really pleased with all the debris that we picked up. And I, I want to thank MoDOT. And I also want to thank MSD for being involved. And it was a, a great project, and I encourage other city employees and uh, city council people to get involved to, to do it. It was a great project, and I look forward to working it again. Apologize, Mr. Caputa. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, yeah, I'd like to announce that Ward 4 has a new restaurant. Uh, Marco's Pizza has opened, been open for a few weeks now. So if you're ever in Ward 4 right there on Patterson, go down there next to Family Video and get yourself a pizza sandwich. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Caputo. Mr. Mayor. I'd like to thank you for sharing the uh, success of our uh, uh, home buyer program. Thanks for coming up tonight, and it was nice seeing you Saturday. We had a very uh, good turnout Saturday at the uh, uh, Greater North County Chamber Business Fair and Taste of North County. It was a great success. Uh, and it was uh, enjoyed by uh, a lot of people. I do believe we had more people last year, but that was only because we had our, uh, an, a special guest at the Egan Center in addition to the uh, chamber event. We had the Easter Bunny. We had a lot of people there to see the Easter Bunny, bunny and after they were finished uh, visiting with the Easter Bunny, they, they flowed over into the Taste of North County uh, Business Fair. But this year was very well attended also. And in addition to this good news, uh, I've got a letter from uh, the uh, uh, bridges, and they're saying that they've got several, they've had a trend of several residents uh, moving back from other parts of town, including St. Charles, to be, to move back to their roots here in Florissant, and, uh, and they're very, very happy to be residents of Florissant again. So uh, we're happy to see those good trends uh, continuing. Um, on uh, Saturday night, uh, I'd like to invite everyone, uh, if you don't have uh, plans already, uh, to come up to JFK Center and the uh, uh, Florissant uh, Explorer, uh, Explorers will be hosting a trivia night uh, from 6.30 p.m. Uh, and uh, so if you've got a team of that uh, knows the trivia game, come on up and support the Explorer Post. This is going to uh, benefit the Florissant Explorer Post and the Overland Explorer Post, and uh, Mayor Mike Schneider and Mayor Tom Schneider will have a team, and we challenge all the rest of you. I don't think we're really going to do that good, but uh, we'd still like to have you come up and support the Explorers. Um, Midwest uh, Recycling is going to uh, conduct a uh, electronics uh, recycling drive on uh, April 5th from 9 to 2 in St. Ferdinand Park. This is something that we've been doing every year. It's very, very popular. Uh, it's also very good for the environment. Uh, you can bring your uh, computer equipment, your television equipment, radio equipment, uh, any kind of electronic equipment that can be recycled, and uh, they will process that for you. And remember, you really don't want to uh, try to discard uh, a lot of these items, especially uh, uh, t you know, t old TVs and such, because there are hazardous materials in there and uh, needs to be disposed of properly. So take this opportunity and bring it to St. Ferdinand Park on, the f on April the 5th. Then that evening, uh, Christian Hospital Auxiliary will have their Golden Charity Ball, uh, and that is a, uh, one of the gala events uh, of the year. Uh, it's been going, goes back a long time. That's going to be uh, 6.30 p.m. at Norwood Hills Country Club, and so if you want to support uh, Christian Hospital, put on a tux or a real nice suit and dress and so forth, see you at Norwood Hills. 
Um, speaking of class, we have the uh, uh, Valley of Flowers Queens dinner on April 6th at the Egan Center, uh, starting at 5 p.m., uh, where we will uh, uh, introduce the uh, queen and her court, uh, or the potential queen and her court, the candidates for queen and her court for 2014. On uh, April 10th, we're going to celebrate Arbor Day up by the jet at the uh, park next to Egan Center. Uh, we'll have uh, a couple of classes of grade schoolers there at 10 a.m., and we will plant a couple of trees up near the, uh, the jet. And then on April 12th, also at St. Ferdinand Park from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, we will have the annual document shredding day. Now, we usually wait until after April 15th, after tax day, but this is the Saturday before April 15th this year. That was the best that we could do. So get your taxes almost done. Get all the documents uh, um, ready to be shredded a couple days before the deadline. Uh, we picked this date, this time of the year, because of, it's kind of, if you think of taxes, think about shredding those uh, sensitive documents, uh, uh, your uh, you know, checks and uh, other documents that you don't want to fall into the wrong hands. And then lastly, on uh, April 23rd, we'll have, uh, we'll co-host the first of four uh, food truck nights at the Knights of Columbus grounds, and proceeds will go to various charities, including TEAM. We'll also have a uh, barrels uh, to collect non-perishable food for TEAM, which is only a couple blocks from the Knights grounds. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lee? Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to make a, a brief statement. Um, two weeks ago tonight, the council passed bill number 8981. This was a bill that was introduced by council as a whole, which means that all nine council people asked to have their name on the bill, and it was approved unanimously by the council. Once a bill is approved, the mayor has 10 days to either sign the bill, veto the bill, or do nothing. And if he does nothing to the bill, it then automatically, it's as if the mayor approved and becomes law, which is his right to do, and, and I think nobody has any problem with that. The mayor issued a statement after that in which um, he gave some reasons for his failure to endorse the bill, and, and, and the council um, decided to issue a response as a council to that bill, and the council prepared and, and asked that that uh, be sent to the same locations and be posted on the website. There were some concerns by the council that there was not proper respect paid as far as naming individual people, um, and, when, and when we posted our response, it became somewhat of a war back and forth because the mayor wanted to then respond to that, to that uh, response to us. Um, and I don't think this is good for the city at all. So I met with the mayor today, and we've, we've discussed everything. And what, what I'm asking everybody to do is we've posted on the Florissant website the mayor's, um, the mayor's reasons for vetoing the bill and the council's response to the bill. I'm not going to be following up any further on, um, with the media on my feelings as to how it was handled and so forth. But... Uh, I think I think the mayor and I are in agreement that what's out there we're satisfied with states our position and I think we just want to move forward for the best of the city. Hope we can put this matter behind us. I think everybody up here has this, the best interest of the city at heart, and uh, that's why the council did what we did, and, and we hope to move forward and not have the petty bickering if we can help it. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. We have a work session on a week from tonight, Monday, March 31st at 7 o'clock at City Hall. Our next council meeting is April 14th at 7 p.m. here at City Hall. Mr. Caputa moves for adjournment, second by Mr. Hernandez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.